Namaskar. Today we are going to look at lifestyles of humankind. So far we've been looking at certain basic ideas in geography, particularly human geography, and also certain important backgrounds for today's lecture. Today we are looking at what is lifestyle. Lifestyle is often defined as a way in which a person or group lives the benefits of a healthy lifestyle. Often people talk about lifestyle as a way of life. Let us look at lifestyle and its meaning. This has a sociological meaning. Lifestyle is a term to describe the way a person lives. It was originally the Australian psychologist, Alfred Adler, who coined the term lifestyle in 1929. The current broader sense of the term dates from 1961. It is defined now as a set of behaviors and the senses of the self and belonging which these behaviors represent. Lifestyles are collectively used to define a given lifestyle of people. The term is defined more broadly when used in politics, marketing, or publishing. A lifestyle is a characteristic bundle of behaviors that makes sense to both others and oneself in a given time and place, including social relations, consumption, entertainment, and dress. The behaviors and practices within lifestyles are a mature habits, conventional ways of doing things, and recent activities. A lifestyle is also a personal or individual identity related issue. A lifestyle typically reflects an individual's attitudes, values, or world view. Therefore, a lifestyle is a means of forging a sense of self and to create cultural symbols that resonate with personal identity. The lines between the personal identity and the everyday doings that signal a particular lifestyle become blurred in modern society. For example, there is a lifestyle known as the green lifestyle today. Green lifestyle really means holding beliefs and engaging in activities that consume fewer resources and produce less harmful waste. That is a smaller carbon footprint and it is driving a sense of self from holding these beliefs and engaging in these activities. Now for example let us look at certain lifestyles of some years ago and lifestyles of today in one or two communities in India. It would be necessary to look at lifestyles of the whole world. Lifestyle relates to the life and work of people and how the culture of these people impact on their life and works. Let's look at an example, example of an Arctic, subarctic people. There is a tribe known as Inuit living in the Arctic region. They are the direct descendants of a prehistoric hunting society that spread across Canada and Alaska. This culture is also called the Thule by archaeologists, quickly adapted to the harsh conditions found in the Arctic. Arctic, as you know, is full of ice and snow. Not only were the whales, seals, fish, 
and caribou abandoned, but also large forests were found in coastal areas. What was a rare resource in remote Arctic areas and needed for making tools, boat frames, and numerous other articles which are used. They are also used for cooking. They are a people who hunted game in all seasons of the year for food and material to craft articles needed for everyday life. Their clothes are made of the skins of the animals. They traveled in one vehicle known as the kayak and larger womb legs framed with wood and covered with seal skins. They wore clothing made from the pelts of seals in summer and caribou in winter. They lived in skin tents during mild seasons and settled during winter either in earthen huts banked by sods with the roof supported by whale ribs and shoulder blades or in snow houses called igloos which are ingenuously shaped from the blocks of hard snow. There is a community living in eastern woodlands. This community of Yenut have the food, shelter, clothing, weapons and tools coming from the forests around them. They live in villages near a lake or a stream. The woodland Indians, as they are called, lived in wigwams and long houses. The Iroquois, Cherokee and Mount Builders were important woodland tribes. The Indians were actually a nation of Indians made up of five tribes. These tribes were the Senecas, Odendas, Wanidas, and Mohawks. These tribes were hostile or warlike to each other until they joined together to become the League of the Five Nations. The northwest coast area of Canada extended along the Pacific coast from South Alaska to California, thickly with the temperate climate and heavy rainfall. The area had long supported a large Native American population. Food sources are salmon, supplemented by sea mammals, seals and sea lions, and land mammals like the deer, elk, and bears, as well as berries and other wild fruit. They used wood to build the houses and had cedar flanked canoes and carved dugouts. Now these are a kind of people who are very small in number today in North America. Looking at the lifestyle of Americans in Alaska, there is a similar pattern, but less white settlement, not forced into reservations. Alaska oil pipelines or settlement along them create corporations of native people who want some of the rights. In 1971, for example, Alaska Native Climate Settlement Act was commissioned. Alaskan people were able to benefit from some of the lessons of those of the lower 48. All of you know about the United States. The United States was either one of the first world countries and one of the most economically powerful countries until recently. America is used to be called the melting pot. 
as a melting pot by the academics. Academics call them salad bowl. A salad bowl really means a place of cultural diversity. Because of the immigrants from Ireland, Germany, Poland, Italy, and Western Africa. So these people from countries far away in Europe and Africa, and today also in the Far East, like China, India, they represent a melting pot, a true melting pot. Today, in America, there are four races, Native American or American Indian, African American, Asian, and white. So they represent a cultural diversity. And that cultural diversity is such that today they represent a lifestyle of different world. For example, Indians in America are today trying to keep their lifestyle intact. America is a land of dream. Americans have what they call the American dream. For them, America is a land of opportunity, a land of individual freedom and choices and lifestyles, which is in a way true. In America, everybody has equal access to economic abundance, and they can pursue a shared objective life, mutually advantageous to the individual and the society. But of course, things have changed. Things are changing for the better, and in recent times, they have changed for the worse. If you look at one particular community called Amerindians, we ask the question, what is culturally and politically important about native Indians in America? When we say native Indians, we're not talking about Indians from India, but we are talking from American Indians who were actually Red Indians. The dominant American Indian view is that we are here in the 20th century. We are a people who change and evolve in changing circumstances. We have values and cultures different from the dominant group of whites. We have the self-determination, and we see ties to indigenous movements around the world. Many of them represent others' appropriation of the culture in artifacts, pseudo-religious ceremonies. What is a lifestyle in, say, 1980s to 2000s? They are having a growing cultural revitalization. They are a specific tribal culture and language. They have what we call the pan-Indian movement of cooperation. There is growing emphasis among them on economic development, on the reservation they live, as well as a separate life that can be viable for them. Continuing legal actions of different treaty rights press land claims and political sovereignty from the larger majority of the whites. The emphasis on the separateness, their distinctiveness, and they are an indigenous people. And they seem to say, we are still here. American Indians are following the American Indian movement and they follow the Native American Rights Fund. And they also have a National Congress of American Indians. Their economic development organizations are such that they are leading them in their own separate cultural and cherished lifestyles. And there is spirituality in what they do. There is Pan-Americanism which is an emphasis on one tribe and culture. 
They teach their own language, and they have bilingual instruction in English and in their own tribal language. There may still be hostility and conflicts with other tribes, but there are today people who emphasize the commonalities as the indigenous people. The National Congress of American Indians and also the American Indian Movement help them lead a life of their own and help them also tie with the indigenous people in other countries. Now we come to India. We take one section of our people and talk about them. Of course, you do know, as Indians, in the lifestyles we have. We have a culture, we have a value, we have norms and mores that we follow in our lifestyles. And we are a people who love to have what we call the universal brotherhood. And we are a democracy. And we are a free people. And therefore, we have a lifestyle of our own. And we cherish our lifestyle. Let's take an example of uh, the people of Punjab the Sikhs. The word Sikh really means a learner. A Sikh is an individual who strives to understand and seek knowledge of eternal wisdom. Sikhism is a philosophy which can be followed by anyone. Sikh philosophy explores eternal truth and our relationship with truth. What are the principles of Sikh lifestyle? They say Nam Japna, which means meditation of God's name. Kirat Karna, which means to earn and harness living and lead a harness life. That is living the style of a householder and raising a family. They also share one's wealth and time with others. Looking at mainstream sex, 80% of them do not have long hair or wear turbans. Some may be recognized as by a metal bracelet on the left or right arm. Sometimes they may not even wear them. They do not have any specific dietary requirements, but may avoid being generally educated. They are people who like to drink. For them, humanity is one family. Their guru, Tenth Guru says, recognize all of mankind as one. First Guru, there is no Hindu, there is no Muslim. All are the same. All religions are merely different ways to God. And they say, acknowledge the light of God in all, and do not think of class or caste, as there is no class or caste in the next world. And they are a community who respect equal opportunities. They have free kitchen open to all. The Golden Temple has four entrances, showing it's open to all. And there is opportunity for women to be involved in all aspects of service. Sikhism has four women bishops. And under the Manji system of diocese, Sikhism is a distinguished religion and culture. It is a liberal religion. It is a belief system. In the Punjabi society is highly conservative. It is agrarian and feudal. It is patriarchal. Almost all Sikhs are ethnically Punjabi, leading to confusion as to the distinction between religion and culture. Let's now look at Punjabi attitudes to equality. In Punjab, there is caste system arrived in the society, with most marriages taking place along the caste lines. Gurudwara is sometimes based on caste lines too, with the lower caste Sikhs having formed a distinct religion due to discrimination. There is 
some amount of gender equality. Though there is a high level of female infanticide by way of selective abortion. 876 female births to 1,000 male births is what Punjab census of 2001 tells us. There is dowry system still practiced despite it being illegal. There are surprisingly honicklings among these people but this is extremely rare. So we have come to learn about uh, the lifestyles of humankind, taking uh, the examples of especially American Indians who are a minority, who are a tribal community, who value their norms, culture, their language, yet they seem to say to Americans that we are here and they belong to 21st century. Then we look at another community in India, Sikh community. According to the knowledge we have, they are more or less similar to uh, the communities we have, although their religion professes certain principles which are to be cherished and followed by everybody. And they are uh, the proud Indians. And if you look at some of uh, the people in other states, you will know their lifestyles are different. There are distinct northern lifestyles and there are distinct southern lifestyles. But when we go to see in terms of religion, and in terms of culture, and in terms of values and norms, you will see a homogeneity in the whole of India, no matter what religion or what caste and creed we belong to. And there are, of course, problems. And there are, of course, lifestyles which are not respected. But in any case, India and America and the whole of the other world represents a lifestyle different and diverse. And the world is surely a melting pot. Thank you. Thank you.